and welcome, my friends and viewers, to this week's episode of Legend Lore, where I draw pictures of monsters, characters, gods, and other things from D&D 5th edition, all while giving a quickly digestible history about them. Together, we'll go over their origins within the game, how they're utilized in the modern edition, and how I like to utilize them in my own games. This episode, we'll be encountering a fiend whose creation and emergence is probably one of the most impactful and memorable moments at any gaming table. The Vargoyle the Vargoyle first appeared in D&D 1st Edition. A small fiend native to the Lower Plains before its insidious disease somehow managed to make its way across the material realm. Resembling deformed and beastly human-like heads, bat-like wings frame their disgusting vestiges of sharp teeth and long twisting tendrils instead of hair. The in-lore origin of the Vargoyle is often disputed, some believing that a Debedan had made them as a servitor race, only for them to betray him and devour him whole. Another possible origin involves them being created as a terror weapon by the wizard known as Rosvanki, which she would use to trade with demons and devils for favors during her time in the Lower Plains. I personally subscribe to the latter as I love the idea of wizards being the architects of some of the world's greatest terrors, so this is the one that I go to for my table. Vargoyles are capable of a terrifying shriek that is capable of paralyzing a non-Vargoyle when combined with their horrifying appearance, and this can leave their prey vulnerable to their poisonous bite which upon suffering can prevent all forms of magical healing. But ultimately the most dangerous ability of the Vargoyle is the way that it reproduces, known as the Vargoyle's Kiss. Upon enacting the kiss on an incapacitated target, that target becomes infected, and over the course of several hours to a day, the target slowly gains more and more fiendish features upon their face and their head, losing their hair, growing horns, and scaly skin as well. In time, the affected will lose all sense of their personality, becoming feral and animalistic before literally ripping their head off from their own shoulders and feasting on the geyser of blood to follow. The best way to avoid encountering a Vargoyle is to keep within brightly lit areas or daylight, which they personally detest and avoid at all costs. It is even believed that exposure to daylight or sunlight, magical or otherwise, is capable of slowing down the Vargoyle's infection, which can also be fully cured by magics that remove diseases or curses. Vargoyles in my world are akin to a mixture of invasive species and an extremely contagious plague. Wherever there can be hellish or abyssal monsters appearing, a Vargoyle is sure to follow, using other fiends as a means of finding targets to infect and feed on. When the fiend they are following attracts the attentions of their adventurers, they simply lie in wait and allow them to waste their time and energy slaying that fiend before the Vargoyle makes itself known and attacks the weakest looking one, looking to infect them as soon as possible. Infecting an NPC or a player and seeking out a cure is a really good quest for low-level characters to have, especially since they won't have access to any magic that can remove the disease yet. You can also have them face off against an entire hive of Argoyles, kissing every single player to make sure that they all share the same grisly fate. And if you wish to take a more stealthy approach, you can have a nomadic Vargoyle hive pass by and kiss and infect a pack of sleeping adventurers, leaving small clues to their presence and ratcheting up the tension very quick, as the party has just slept away a few of the precious hours they need to find a cure. One of my favorite adventure ideas that I haven't gotten to deploy yet is instead of having a Vargo attack a party or try to skulk to infect them, the party comes across a large town where the infection has become monstrously rampant, all of its townspeople bearing the trademark fiendish attributes of the Vargoyle. The party must find the source of the hive and prevent any further infection before it can travel to the neighboring villages and cities spreading it further and further. The source of this could be a demonic cult grooming the place for ritual, using biological warfare, a wizard whose experiment has gone haywire and resulted in a particularly powerful strain of Vargoyalism, or anything else that you guys can come up with. The Vargo itself can be harvested for its powerful venom, which can be used to dip arrows or weapons in for healing prevention. And then my homebrew magic item for this monster is something known as the Face of the Vargoyle, a special mask made from the creature's face that has been cleaned and tanned, bearing a whistle made from the vocal cords and larynx of the creature, meant to simulate its stunning shriek once per day. Both items have been listed below in the description. The Vargoyle, in my opinion, is a perfect first fiend to introduce to your party. But that does not mean that it can't be expanded upon to city-scale or even world-scale threats, with just the mere heightening of DCs and releasing of a large number of them. I want to thank all of you guys for watching, and if you want to keep updated on the next Legend Lore, please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon in the corner to be notified. Also, please follow me on social media for progress of each art piece. Also, comment down below how you guys have used Vargoyles in your games, and also, what kind of other D&D monsters, characters, or gods you guys would like to see in upcoming videos. Until then, I will see you guys next time.